Alan, it's uh, really good to talk to you. Um, Tony's told me a lot of things about. Uh, uh, are, are you more or less an art critic, or, or do you uh, you you actually are an artist, or uh, kind of fill yeah, our I listeners do. in? Yeah. Well, I do a couple of things. Um, I'm an artist first and foremost. I've been making art for over 25 years. Um, I also am a co-director of an art program, a collegiate art program here in Brooklyn in a place called Dumbo. And I bet you 10 bucks you don't know what Dumbo is. Uh, <laughs> okay, you win. <laughs> <laughs> down under the Manhattan Bridge overpass. Right. It's a uh, it's a little section here where uh, Washington George Washington used to mix it up with I believe it was the British. He crossed the river here, and uh, it's a pretty historic uh, place as far as oh. our own history is concerned. And it's still like a little enclave that's kind of separate from uh, the rest of the city. It's uh, kind of preserved itself through all the years and. If you go back to some of those old uh, 50s black and white movies of New York City, there's a good chance that you'll see uh, a couple of Dumbo videos in there, yeah. or a couple of images of, of uh, you know, the Brooklyn Bridge and the Manhattan Bridge, and so a lot of history here, for sure. How, how wow. far how far are you from Bannerman Castle? Uh, oh, is that on the Hudson River? I think so. Yes. It's kind of like a, a relic. Yeah, Bannerman bought uh, all all kinds of military surplus and uh, built a <laughs> built the first army and navy type store and uh, sold it worldwide and really fun, funded armies and everything and he built his own castle out there off the Hudson. Yeah, and it's still in Oh, I see. So it's his house. Yeah, it's in ruins, but it's pretty pretty neat. Yeah, I go by there when I take the train upstate to Albany. I go by there. I'm like, oh, that's a really cool thing. I, I wonder if they're ever going to do anything with it. Yeah, I don't. I think it's just tied up. Yes, it's. Uh, it, it doesn't look like it should be there, but it is. It looks like it should be on the coast of Ireland or something. Right. So it's pretty interesting. Well, Rick yeah, and I. Rick, is a great... Rick and I are not. We are not. Uh, we're not art critics. We don't know a lot about art, so we, we kind of school us on some things there and let us know what uh, what we should be looking at. Well, what are, what are your critics on? Are you, are you Civil War buffs or anything, or what's your uh, what's your forte besides art? Yeah, I'm, I'm a Civil War buff. I've been to the mm-hmm. battlefields from Gettysburg to Chickamauga, but I've not been to anything in New York. Mm-hmm. And I just you know, like Yankee, so you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good yeah, Rick's a big Yankee well, fan. You know, so I tell you, like, uh, I don't know, New York is somewhat like an island in our nation all of its own, it seems like, sometimes. And, uh, mm-hmm. you know, to uh, to be here and to, you know, understand that there's people here from all over the world basically living here together, it's kind of, you know, you think about all the problems that are going on out there, you scratch your head and you say, well, why does it kind of work here but it can't work in other parts of the world? So that's... Uh, you know, it's an interesting topic to you know, yeah. being here. Yeah. Is, uh, it's a unique place that way. You know, we get, you have people from all walks of life, and we all seem to get along, so to speak. So it's a nice part about living here. Yeah. Well, we uh, in 2009, we um, kind of trekked to uh, to see the new Yankee Stadium. And um, mm-hmm. my wife and I spent a few days there. Uh, of course, we stayed in Manhattan, but we were, you know, just right around the corner. And we saw so many, like you're saying, so many different people got along so well. We had zero negative experiences in New York City, and it was uh, it was probably one of the best trips I've ever took in my whole life. Not not because I wanted to be there per se, but it was just a pleasant, pleasant trip. Everybody was so nice, and I was I was really shocked. Where did you guys eat? Where did you uh did you go to PGI um, on Friday or did you go for some uh, authentic Italian food? Uh, well actually we were going to PGI Fridays and we got in there and the and the air conditioner was out. So we we went a couple of different places and, and you know, I probably got the best food I've ever had uh from a food vendor on the on the corner there. Oh right. Um, Those are the best kind of meals, right? Those five, five Oh my 
talented. Yeah, I mean, they were just great. And then probably, you know, everybody talks about New York style pizza, but we, uh, the first day that we got there, we walked across from our, uh, where we were staying on 34th Street, and there was a huge, huge corner pizza parlor there. And, um, probably the best pizza I've ever had in my life. Well, uh, just yeah. wonderful. You know, you got to ask yourself, why is it so good? Because of the people that are making it, you know? Exactly. They know how to make it <laughs> very well. <laughs> well, let me, ask you, let me ask you a question. Let me turn this around a little bit. So you, you're from the Midwest, and you come to New York, you have pretty much any kind of restaurant in the world that you can go, any kind of food. What what makes you want to go to something like TJ, TG, uh, TG, TGIF Fridays, when you can have that pretty much any day of the week where you're from. What makes you want to go there when you're here? Is it familiar? Um, yeah, I think so, because we, uh, I think we were in Times Square that day, if I can remember correctly. And uh, I wanted to see so many things that day in Times Square, just different places I wanted to go. And uh, right. we were trying to grab a quick lunch and something that was sort of, you know, sort of filling and, um, you know, a a decent place to sit down and not being from New York, we didn't really know all the great places. To eat. There's a lot of hidden jewels in that place right. as far as restaurants go. And, um, I was just really shocked. Uh, one thing I did find in a very small street, uh, was a Lindy's cheesecake. Oh yeah. Lindy's um, cheesecake. Oh my gosh. Legendary. For for mailing out cheesecakes, man, they you know they send out I don't know how many thousands of cheesecakes a year, and uh, right. you really got to see how they were made, and and it was just unreal that they made they had that big operation in that small of an area, and uh, right. were doing so well with. It. <laughs> you know, it's funny. Like uh, I'm from Rochester, New York, and when I moved down here about 20 years ago. I really wasn't impressed with the food because I was so used to the things that I had back home that I mm -hmm. could never get here in New York City. Like, uh, for instance, you know what a Kaiser roll is? Yes, I do. Like, for whatever reason, they stopped making Kaiser rolls in New York City, and I was like, I was just, I was like, where? I can't believe in a city this big, it's hard to find Kaiser rolls. And <laughs> yeah, really. It's like we. What it makes me think about is that, you know, you get used to the things that you like from where you grow up or you're familiar with, and when you don't have them, I guess, is when you really start to miss them. Exactly. I agree completely. Yeah. And then in each different part of the country, uh, it's funny now, like, it's becoming very artisanal here. Brooklyn is the new Manhattan. So from what I understand, when people come to visit New York, they don't, you know, instead of going to shows and spending all kinds of money, they come over to Brooklyn and... and take advantage of this thing called uh, uh, Smorgasburg, which is a place in Williamsburg, like an outdoor flea market for food and whatnot. And wow. uh, you can come over here and kind of walk around and have a good time. And it's not so pressurized. It's a little, uh, you know, there's more room to walk around and do whatever. But what's happening now is people who, especially young people who are moving here from all over the country, they bring their home recipes with them. And they, they kind of start up their own, thing from, say, back in Ohio or New Hampshire or California. So you're getting all these localized foods being served up here in New York now, and it's pretty exciting, you know? For those, who don't, for those of us who like to eat. <laughs> yeah. Not us. <laughs> yeah. I mean, sort of a, a, sort of a problem. It's sort of a problem I have. <laughs> sort of a problem, yeah. yeah. What, what's the special food there? What, what's the thing you guys have there that you can't find anywhere else in the world? Oh, dip man. dogs, man. Dip dogs uh, in Marion, dip Virginia. Dogs. Yeah, <laughs> actually. <laughs> go ahead, Tony. This is you got to you got to do this one. It's what uh, is this one? What, what's this, Tony? It's like a corn dog, but it's a dip dog, and it's made with. Uh, I can't tell you the ingredients, but uh, it's made in a way that uh, that that tastes a lot different than a corn dog, and it's like candy. And uh, the people that come through Marion, Virginia. Uh, there's a place that's actually out, uh, what's called Adwell, Virginia, uh, but it's off the outskirts of Marion, the big, huge city of Marion, Virginia, which is about 6,000 people. <laughs> but uh, so, so maybe 4,000. I may be wrong. But anyway, this little place, uh, 
called it's called highway drive in, but they also call it the dip dog stand. Uh, people. That, I'm looking this up on the internet right now, by the way. So the, the people that come <laughs> I'm, through. I'm going to check your. I'm going to check your facts here, Tony. Okay. <laughs> The people we'll that come sure through. Make sure you're telling the truth here. <laughs> yeah, I'm not making it up. The people that come just through. The facts. Just the they, facts, man. They always, like relatives and friends, they come and visit. They have to go to the dip dog stand. That's what they call it. It's highway drive-in, H-I-W-A-Y mm-hmm. drive-in. And right. uh, it's expanded. It was it was just a small little, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you order and sit in a parking lot, and they call out a number, and you pick up the food. And uh and it's now, now they have a little bit of an outside seating area and a little bit of an inside seating area and a little gift shop and all that stuff. It's kind of grown a little bit over the years, but it's still kind of a mom and pops uh, thing. And uh, that's it's just a you know good good food, good French fries. Yeah. Do you think it'll take off in New York City? Is that how they're doing it? Do you know if anybody's doing it here yet? No, no, I don't know if anyone's doing that. And they've got their little slogan. If you probably see this, because the people that like it put the little bumper sticker on their car. It says "Got Dip Dogs," mm-hmm. <laughs> which is mm-hmm. if you've never heard of a dip dog, then you don't know what that means. But. <laughs> so it's amazing what we eat and take for granted. Last night I went out and I uh, had some boneless chicken wings, and I'm eating these food, and I'm like, this looks like dog food. Oh. <laughs> Like, where the hell am I eating this? What the hell? They put some sauce on there. Like, yeah. I wash it down with a beer, and I guess it's okay. But, yeah. uh, exactly. Well, we're we're going to come up there sometime. Uh, we've already talked about going to a Yankees game. Uh, Rick's a big Yankee fan. I don't really care. I like baseball, but I'm, I'm no, I don't really have a team. So, uh, uh, but we're probably going to come up there. So we'll have to hang out or something. You'll have to show us some places to go. Now this is this is weird. I wish you could show your viewers this. I'm looking at images of Dip Dog, and <laughs> it's absolutely the most nonsensical sign I've ever seen in my life. <laughs> it's got a picture of an ice cream cone. That's probably right. Let's see. Let me look it up here. There's an There's no. Is there a dog on this thing, or what's going on? No, there's no real dog. It's a hot dog. There. So is it the idea that you have to have an ice cream cone along with your Dip Dog, or the yeah. other way around. Yeah, they serve uh, the ice cream. The ice cream or the dip dog. Yeah. Uh, you can, I, I'm looking at the website right now. They're slathered in mustard. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, that's... Uh, wow. And right next to the dip dog is a uh, um, a dog dish. <laughs> <laughs> Which brings us back to the uh, boneless chicken wings. And net radio dogs. <laughs> <laughs> well, it somehow it all goes back to our conversation about art, you know. Yeah. 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 How did we get over here? Well, yeah. you talk you talk to Lupiani, you might get anything, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, the, the idea, and there's a fluorescent chihuahua in the Google image search too under dip dog. So go figure that one out. It, it well, looks that, like they dipped the chihuahua in fluorescent paint. <laughs> yeah, that may be Andy Warhol. That might be uh, a, yeah, there you go. on the wrong side there. Yeah. <laughs> or or uh, maybe it's Miley Cyrus's dog. Right. <laughs> so no, she's I, an artist now. So if I take a picture you know of that, right? Miley is? You know that Miley Cyrus is considering herself an artist, and she actually has like uh, some art <laughs> shows in and around New York, and she has yeah. some critics talking about her stuff. Wow. Yeah, that's whatever she wants to do. She's also she a big Instagram uh, user as well. Right, right. And Actually, I just started following her on Instagram. I'll have to. We'll have to do that. We'll have to follow her. We do Instagram, and so they sometimes take our pictures and make uh, ninety thousand dollars off of those by putting them in the gallery. Yeah. <laughs> well, I actually think oh. Miley. You know, back to the conversation about art, and because you asked me to speak a little bit about Instagram and art and New York City and this and that. Right. I think she's actually a good kind of person to talk about in the sense that her father was well, Billy Ray Cyrus. He was a country singer. Right, right. And uh, now the daughter is, you know, she's kind of like another pop star like Lady Gaga. And, you know, Lady, many people consider Lady Gaga, who's actually from New York City, to be an artist. Right. Uh, you know, performance artist and also whatever other kind of art she does. You know, basically a performer, singer, artist. And uh, I've been thinking a lot about this idea between uh, what is American culture becoming as far as, like, where does an art and entertainment crossover? And, and Miley 
Cyrus is someone, whether you like her or not, she's making an attempt to kind of do both. Right. Mm, and right. in a way, even if she's a bad artist, you know, which is debatable by some, what it brings up is this idea that more people are scratching their heads saying, you know, what is contemporary art across the country than probably at any time in our recent history. So, um, you know, I think people from around the country, if you ask them, you know, like, who are the top 10 most important artists in New York City, they may not know any of them. I mean, they may know one. Have you guys ever heard of Jeff Koon? I have not. No. Well, Jeff Koons is probably one of the most famous sort of contemporary pop artists. He's like after Warhol, let's say. You know who Andy Warhol is. Well, you know, Jeff Koons does these big flower puppies, and uh, he just had a big show. He did something with Michael Jackson years ago, uh, like a gold Michael Jackson with a a puppy or a monkey, a fat monkey. And, uh, you know, he's been known for for many, many years for the international as being you know, like probably one of the most famous artists in the world. But yet, if you do a poll of of 10 Americans across the country, not a single one of them would know who he is. Right. Wow. So, you know, but if you say Grandma Moses, everybody knows who Grandma Moses is, but she's not (laughs) necessarily a contemporary artist. You know what I mean? Right, yeah. Yeah, the, I here in New York the, City, they just they just opened up the the museum here, the New Whitney Museum, which is more like a it's a beautiful on the inside, but from the outside, it looks like like almost like a, a German fortress during World War II. Oh, Auschwitz I mean, or something. Uh, but it's a beautiful structure on the inside, and the first show that they had, I think the title of it is "America It's Hard to See" or something similar to that, and it's basically their whole entire collection out. And the idea is is that you know. We here in America, we have kind of a difficult time seeing who we are. <laughs> I guess it's really changing. Alan, I already, I already feel smarter after talking to you. <laughs> have another dip dog. Maybe you'll feel even smarter. <laughs> what those nitrates really uh, sink in there? Oh, that's great, man. I'm so this is, so what do you what do you think about this guy that took Instagram photos and made all that money from those things? Oh yeah, do you see no that's a good one. That was I was at that show. Oh, and okay. that was uh it, yeah, I was. And uh that was an art fair. Art fairs have kind of become the new Barnum Daily act of the contemporary art world. For instance, it gets collectors internationally to come to one place so it's like a one stop shop. It's like going to Costco's for contemporary collectors. You know, right. they just to go to one place and say, oh, I want one of these, two of those, three of those, and off they go. It's like they don't have to go globe trying around every single gallery in California, New York, Berlin, Belgium, wherever. They can do it all in one place. Wow, so yeah. that show of Richard Prince, who actually, I think, Tony, you'd really like him. If you look at his other work, if you do a Google search on him, you'll see that this guy does fabrications of muscle cars. He's got a place upstate where he takes hubcaps and, like, Plasters a barn with him, so it looks like something else. And he's kind of like America's, like, if you want to talk about uber cool sort of contemporary artist. I actually think, was it even Richard Prince? It may have been Richard Prince who did the Marlboro Man ads back in the 70s. Right. Oh, wow. Yeah. Yeah. So so he is kind of like, you know, there's, there's this big thing about, you know, how do you stay in the moment? You know, what is contemporary? What is something that's made like with a time stamp signature to it. And I think those Instagram photos are like a great example of that. All he basically did is visually print those and stretch them on canvas. Right. And, you know, he's a little bit of a naughty guy. He likes, you know, pictures of young women, you know, mobile women or whatever. But that's kind of like the edge, you know. It's like taking us back to like the days of Black Sabbath and the 70s rock. You know, those were exciting times because there was a little bit of an edge in our culture where in the last 20 years, 30 years, everything has become very homogenized. Have you ever heard the term monoculture? Yes. Yes, I have, yeah. Monoculture is like, you know, well, you know, if you go to Cleveland, Ohio, or Rochester, New York, or Washington, D.C., we all, we all look the same. The ducks same are in a row. <laughs> Kids are doing the same things. It's the same everywhere. Right. And, uh, you know, it's just like kind of a battle for individualism. I think I think the internet obviously has a lot to do with that. Yeah, but you go over to Europe, and a lot of things in Europe look just like they do here. 
You know, it's, uh, it's very unusual. It's an unusual time in which we live in because I think all of technology and that the way we are, things uh, compound themselves so quickly, exponentially, that um, we all have the same information at the same time. And it's kind of like we all have the same needs and wants or similar needs and wants in certain ways. And, uh, you know, I'm, part of that's a good thing because in a way we are smarter because we have more accessibility to information and cultures and trends. And at the same time, it's like, you know, it's hard to differentiate between what's important and what is just kind of like run of the mill. Right. So, I've, I've looked at a lot of your art on uh... – you know, Facebook and things you've put up there. And that's always interesting right. to see, uh, uh, and, and things that, uh, you know, that, that look fairly just normal, but you're, you're active in that. Uh, can you tell what type of style you are or you, or do you have even have a certain well, style? Yeah, I'm actually becoming more of a pop artist and I, and I use that term loosely. I, I think I, I've always been a serious student of art. Like I pretty much, can tell you if you go into the museum with me, I could walk up to pretty much any artist and tell you who it is. Right. Um, and I think now I'm going to be entering my later midlife crisis in about a month and a half from now. Uh, I've kind of settled down and accepted all the different styles that I've developed through the years, and now I can just make the art that I want to make. I, I'm kind of like a blues musician, you know, like you grow up kind of following this guy, this person, this person. And then you get to the point where you say, I don't give a sh, you know what. And, right. you, go ahead and, start, and you just start making the work that makes you happy. Right. And then if other people find that it's uh, making you know them happy, then you keep making it. Or you don't. You do find something else to do. But I think I used to think I, I thought about art in such a, a high level of like through history and what it means to society that it kind of was an unreachable thing to me. But now. It's more like down earth. So I'm working on a series now of paintings of one of my favorite bands. I think Tony may have seen a couple. It's like a they're Black Sabbath themed paintings, and uh, I switch up the colors. I switch up the collage element. Right now, I'm using some like uh, uh, kind of racing car flames on them, and, and the colors are all trumped up. And I just enjoy making them and changing up the, the, the singular thing. I think what happens, especially for those younger artists who may be listening to my is that when you're learning how to do these things, try to stay with one thing before jumping on to another. And it's kind of like a metaphor for other things in life, too, is that I think oftentimes when we find an interest in something, especially with so much information bombarding us these days, that we don't take enough time to develop one thing well. And, and right. I think that's happening in our society a lot, not just with contemporary culture, but, you know, you know, fixing cars or learn how to mow the grass. I mean, we always jump from the one thing that gives us uh, titillation to the next before we are able to master anything. And uh, I think that if I had a critique of our culture today, that's probably it. And for young people especially, it's so easy to get distracted that you know, unless you can find a passion and stay with it and just believe in that, then uh, life can be too, it can be difficult. You know, it can get, to jump around too much, and I see that happening an awful lot. And I was looking at that uh, the the Miley Cyrus stuff. It's bright and flashy, and she she looks like uh, looks like she's uh, Lady Gaga mixed with someone that's trying to create art. <laughs> um, what, what, yeah, you know I mean? well, you know, but this is the world in which we live in now, and you know, even the fact that this you know pop star is actually trying to do something, I find it to be novel. And I'm kind of, I'm curious about it because you know really she's probably not a dumb girl you know she's probably got a lot of exposure a lot of different people a right. lot of different ideas and who's to say that one cannot you know and that this world of entertainment cannot have something to offer artistically to me it seems like right. almost like a natural fit like right. the more experiences that you're exposed to if you have a visual imagination uh, why not attempt to parlay that into something. So, you know, I, I don't know Miley Cyrus, but I, she, I think she's an example. The reason why I'm talking about her is I think she's an example of sort right. of like uh, a young person in our contemporary culture who has success, is an entertainer, she makes a lot of money, she comes from a family, obviously that's had a lot of success. 
Um, and she's, you know, pushing the envelope. She doesn't have to do this stuff, but she does it because she's curious probably about who she is and how she's, how other people see her, how she sees herself in culture. And so she's pushing the envelope by trying something else. And you know what? Today I give her some credit. Whether you like her artwork or not or what she stands for, I think is kind of irrelevant. It's the idea of kind of getting wrapped up in a process and, and having and being part of a community of people. And obviously she has a huge community. I mean, each one of her Instagram pictures has about 250,000 uh, people liking it. So that's pretty cool, you know. If you woke up in the morning and, and you know, uh, I don't know, made a painting of a tree and put it on Instagram and had 500,000 people take a look at it and comment on it, that would probably, that'd probably be a pretty neat experience. <laughs> no, don't you think? Right. Yeah, I don't, I don't look for that to happen, you know, with any of mine anytime soon. But uh, I think you're exactly right. Uh, we were, you know, you're talking about your midlife crisis uh, thing, and, you know, I'm 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 right there with you. Um, so, I mean, I've, I've started to do things I, you know, didn't do before, and and uh, I understand that how that – the beauty of that can come through when you just want to – Say, hey, you know, I've never tried this before. Let me see if I can. Uh, let me see if I can do this. So it's, yeah. um, you know, it's Take a very attractive right. thing, you know, to to anybody, no matter what age you are. But like you're saying, a lot of the younger people just don't, uh, you know, they don't want to. They don't want to do that. There's a lot of things going on in the world, and they want to get just a small bite of everything. I guess. Right. Well, back to back to Tony's uh, uh, observation about Richard Prince. And how he are you guys familiar with the term appropriation? What that means? When you appropriate mm-hmm. something, it's like you basically lift it off of somebody else. Right, right, right. So part of being like a compelling contemporary artist, I think I think kind of good artist, is that you kind of challenge the status quo. So here we are talking about Instagram art and kind of like looking at all these different pictures and having all this accessibility to all you know, people personalized and whatnot. Well here's what this guy does. And he says, I'm not going to ask anybody for permission. I, trust me, he's, he's got money in the bank. I mean, he's not right. suffering at all. And it's right. this old adage about, like, you know, well, well, so he just takes these images and blows them up and puts them in a famous art fair. And next thing you know, the New York Times or somebody latches on to it and someone complains that they took his image and they didn't ask for permission. Well, every conversation that takes place, do you think it's going to make the value of that work go up or go down? Yeah. Oh yeah, it's definitely going to be worth a lot more money now. I mean, you know, and don't you think he's sitting back in his chair? You think he's he's worried about that, or you think he's getting the last laugh? Yeah, he's, right. he's sort of it, man. He's sort of captured. Exactly. He's captured a time in a genre in a society, and fifty years from now, that piece of art that sold for ninety thousand dollars may be the only that, thing but left. It has a backstory, <laughs> right? Definitely. I lived underneath the guy. Uh, who I won't name because he's he's so famous now, but he was a lead singer of a band. He lived in my building for like two or three years, <laughs> and very talented guy. Had a voice like Iggy Pop, and uh, you know he was kind of suffering for a couple of years, but very talented. And his paintings are selling at auction now for nine hundred thousand dollars each. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> They had a studio still in the neighborhood, and, uh, you know, it just goes to show that, I mean, he was also a very, very nice guy. People like him. But can you imagine, and this is, a, this is, this is the life of an artist, you know, he probably sold that painting that sold at auction for $900,000. He probably sold that painting four years ago out of the studio or through the gallery for maybe 20000 Right. So well, he doesn't yeah. see a cent of that $900,000 that sold at auction. How would you feel if you made a painting four years ago and it just sold at nine hundred thousand dollars at auction and you pocketed after expenses? You know that galleries take fifty to sixty percent of the profit from the painting. So if you sell something for twenty thousand after taxes and you're done, you're lucky to take home five thousand dollars. Right, man, I would be pissed. Do, do people know that? Do, did you know that that galleries charge that much? I didn't know. No, but I you think I might open an art gallery now. Can you walk there's into? No there's no residual rights either. Right. So once that thing is out the door and you get a check for it, it's gone, baby. It's out, out the door. 
Can you walk into Can you walk into Christie's or Sotheby's up there and just let's look at things that they have for sale and auction? Or? Yes, you can. They actually have pretty good contemporary art collections. And funny enough, have you heard of the artist Damien Hurst? He's an English guy. He's kind of like part of the uh, Brass Pack generation of uh, English artists. I have uh, not. Back in the late 90s. He, does a, he did the pickled shark. And the, ever see the shark thing? And right. he's got a shark in there. All right. He did that. And, uh, well, he did the polka dots. Like, you see the different colored dot paintings that sell for millions of dollars. He did a diamond-encrusted skull. Wow. Well, this guy, <laughs> he no, I, remember, I actually remember seeing that diamond-encrusted well, skull. Now he, that you're talking he's about. an English. He's about my He's about 49 years old. He's gotten so big, so popular, so famous that he bypasses the gallery structure altogether, <laughs> and he sells his work from his studio at Christie's. So he bypassed the entire <laughs> structure and goes right to the auction, and then he wow. profits from it. Not only that, he buys back his own artwork. <laughs> so he sold something. Can you imagine? So he sells something for fifty thousand dollars, and it goes up to five hundred thousand. He's back there with his business partners two years later. He buys it back. <laughs> oh my God, that's great. That's called investing yourself, don't you think? Yes, yeah. it is. That is actually the way to do it. <laughs> I would probably if I was going to. That would be it right there. I would if I lived so up there. I would. I would be in those. Stuff. If I lived in New York, I would go to those places probably monthly. Just to check I just out. had a, an idea for a gold dip, uh, dip dog. I don't know. You think we could sell that? Uh, you could take a gallery? picture. You could take a picture of the dip dog and sell it for more than all the dip dogs they've ever sold there put together. A diamond, a, a diamond encrusted dip dog. Right. <laughs> That's pretty good. Let's actually. let's let's take a picture. A great, that was a great segue. The dip dog is contemporary art. I mean, you can't ask for anything better than that. I'm yeah, we're better than we thought we were. Yeah. I'm, we'll looking take at the picture. I'm looking at poodles dipped in paint along with the dip dogs. <laughs> right. And which took, us right to Miley, which took us right to Miley Cyrus. I mean, if this isn't <laughs> the internet in full swing, I don't know what is. Yeah. We, <laughs> oh, we, my God. We have pretty abstract... Contemporary, contemporary culture with a click of a mouse. We have pretty abstract minds, and I think uh, we get along pretty well, Alan. Um, that's good. What makes, what makes you so abstract? Well, I'm, you know, I'm thinking right now about taking a picture of an old copy of Photoshop software with art behind it. You know, that's kind of, uh, that could have been created with that software. Just, that's kind of, uh, uh, you know, kind of weird, but uh, that's uh, that's sort of abstract, maybe. I don't know. Are you, you're, you're thinking? I'm sorry, are you taking any special drugs for this? Or? No, 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 not at all. Just dip yeah, dogs. We, we, you know, people who talk like that here in New York, we think they're on quaaludes. <laughs> yeah, my uh, I've not taken any illegal drugs yet. I'm, well, <laughs> at some at some point, uh, if they legalize, I have another you think dip I might dog. Have, have another dip dog. Well, he's only been working with me for a short time, so the, <laughs> the drugs are just, uh, they're on their way, you know, it's just, it's got to happen. You know, here in New York, I don't know, I don't know about where you're from, but here in New York, I understand that you can, uh, you just call a number and the guy comes over with a suitcase and says, what kind of, what kind of, yeah. you know, drugs yeah. do you want? And was it Lebowski? Service, yeah. The big Lebowski, or what was that? The... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Now, that would work hard, the big Lebowski. <laughs> yeah, you know, that's a great movie. <laughs> it was. The dude. <laughs> it's real. <laughs> I, can all, I can only be that guy, you know, when I get older. You know? Yeah, John Goodman walks in. Well, may, well, maybe you are, you just don't know it. <laughs> that's possible, too. <laughs> you know what? Nobody's all, telling me yet. <laughs> you know what's interesting to me in New York City is that uh, Obscura shop. I watched that show on the Science Channel. With oddities, and have you ever been there? No. Is that? Uh, do you even know where it is? I'm not sure if it's right in the middle, of New York City. Or do you have to be? Do you have to be 21 to get in there? Probably so. <laughs> probably so. It is. Uh, is it next seen? to a place called the? Is it next to a place called the Pink Pussycat? 
No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know about that. But they sell like uh, taxidermy animals and parts of things and weird stuff, and and it's just pretty, uh, pretty, pretty odd show. And uh, the characters, the people that work there, are pretty, pretty wild too. And, and then they bring in people from the neighborhood and that uh, that also have some weird, uh, weird things going on. So it's a pretty interesting show. <laughs> but I, I want to go up there. That's that's one place I want to visit when. When I do go up there, do they ask you to take off any articles of clothing while you're in there? I, you know, there are people. I think that people do do that, but uh, I probably wouldn't. I would, uh, I would have an extra layer of clothing on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I won't ask what, Tony. I won't ask what. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm thinking about maybe postponing the New York trip. I don't know. I, you know, I bought that spacesuit for a reason. Okay, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Uh, I don't know. I think we might start a new trend here tonight of dipping our portals into different kinds of fluorescent <laughs> things. It looks pretty yeah. cool. What they got Boy, going on here? I thought. Yeah, Pete is gonna love this one. <laughs> Oh my God! Well, what's the what's the strangest piece of art that you've ever purchased? Uh, it's a tough one. Let me think. Um, I'll say most unique. We'll say that it's the most unique. If he bought it from Obscura, it I tells don't. us that right now. Don't be upset. <laughs> Got me something. I'm sure it wasn't a, a replica of a fluorescent poodle. Um, <laughs> it was probably. I mean, oh, I actually collected, um, and it's my my favorite work. It was from the East Village, two photographs of, um, um, let's say, uh, two individuals who were exhibiting um, public, certain kinds of public behavior in, <laughs> in public arenas, which um, were both intriguing and, and taboo. I'll just say that. Oh, no. Okay. <laughs> and and one was of the artist's girlfriend, and and the others were uh, a bunch of boys in a park, uh, oh, no. surrounded by surrounded by police officers. Wow. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You had to maybe, ask. Maybe, right? I'll, maybe I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'll do another question. <laughs> So what goes so on? The police officer, I'll also say this. I'll qualify this. The police officers didn't seem to mind too much. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> well, I'll leave the yeah. I'll leave the rest of that up to your imagination. <laughs> oh Since God. you're such an abstract conceptual thinker, Mister Dollar. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much. All right. Um, so what is there to do in Brooklyn if you're just coming up there to visit or whatever? I, I didn't go to Brooklyn when I came up there, um, but I was, uh, you know, after the Brooklyn Nets came to town and, and all that good stuff, I, I started, uh, you know, thinking maybe I should come up there and watch a basketball game or something, you know, because I, I sort of like the team and all that good stuff. But uh, what 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 is the big thing in Brooklyn now other than basketball? Brooklyn itself is larger than life. I mean, the real estate market here is, is going through the roof. It's a phenomenon, I think, that started about 10 years ago. Um, and I think, you know, I can't put my finger on it. All that I'll say is it, I think it's driven by the young people who come here and are, you know, it's a, it's a land of dreamers. And uh, in many ways, Brooklyn itself um it's undergoing a renaissance. I mean, they're pointing, you know, the, the uh, new arena that just went up. You had the New York, uh, the New York Islanders are going to be now the Brooklyn Islanders. The hockey right. team is going to be there. Jay Z has infused a lot of resources into his old neighborhood, and uh, downtown Brooklyn looks like a major upgraded cosmopolitan city. Mm. And it just has a little more breathing room, I think. Overall, it's more. Neighborhood oriented. I think what's happened too is the economics of Manhattan 
uh, so damn expensive there. It's like, you know, hedge funds are the ones who are buying up the houses. I mean, it's not even like the normal everyday people can even live in Manhattan anymore. Uh, the hedge funds are looking for tax havens for their dollars. They're buying up, you know, condominiums and buildings, and you can't touch an apartment in Manhattan, you know, a decent place. Actually, it's the same thing going on now in Brooklyn. A lot of people are saying Brooklyn's too expensive. They're moving back to Manhattan. So, uh, wow. Hmm. It's just, I think the real estate market is really driving a lot of what's going on here. And, you know, it's, it's, there's always jobs in the city. There's jobs that pay by. And when I came, when I was thinking about moving here, I was like, well, if I live in, I was at the time in Binghamton, New York. And I was making high ten dollars an hour as a bartender or something. I'm like, well, you know, it's more expensive to live in New York, but you're gonna get paid better as well. And there's more jobs. So for me it was kind of like an easy call. Because if you really wanna work here, I mean you can get up in the morning and find a job the same day. I mean, it may not be the job that you want, but it's it's a job that's gonna pay you something. And right. and I think that alone kind of propels the growth here is that, you know, there's so much commerce and uh, there's so many people and there's so much interactivity. There's so many different things to do that um, it just kind of self-perpetuating. So, you know, can I put my finger on one thing? I, I would say that A, it's the real estate market that's doing this whole thing. I think B, it's young people coming from all over the world uh, that want to have a life that's really coming from their humble homes from wherever, they feel like they don't have the same opportunities that they can have here. And there's just a sheer volume of people and experience there. I mean, it's really never a boring day in New York. I mean, if you're bored here, you got to really, think you have to work really hard at it. <laughs> so, uh, or have, you know, a, a Spanish those, dog. Those pigeons don't feed themselves. <laughs> you know, I, it's a tough one. So, uh, and I'm not saying that this is the best place in the world either. I mean, it's not for everybody. I mean, there's, I mean, there's a big movement in regionalism now as well. I mean, Detroit's an up-and-coming city. Uh, right. Houston, Houston's a very wealthy city with a lot of art appreciated, a lot of oil money, a lot of Republican art collectors down there. And I was just talking to somebody today who um, is the director of a major uh, art program in the South at a university. He's like, you'd be surprised, Dad. He goes, and one of the reasons why I took the job down here is fundraising is not such a big deal. There's a lot of money down here, and a lot of people who want to be involved with art. And uh, you know, mm-hmm. and then the Republican folks down there in, in Texas is like a country all of its own. They feel like they don't have to go anywhere else. Like, that's it. It's Texas. There's nothing yeah. else, you know. It's like you and and they really believe in developing their own culture, and they want to be a part of a global contemporary narrative that is going on. So they buy up a lot of art and they bring a lot of people down there who know a lot about art. So it's an interesting uh, crossing over between sort of conservative interests and mm-hmm. progressive liberal sort of ideas. And how that all kind of comes together is I think that's what America is about in a nutshell. And that's all I'm going to say. I'm done. I'm leaving. <laughs> I'm out. You're done. <laughs> We just covered. We just covered. You know, Mike. Mike. I think I'm going to run for office. I'm inspired to run for office now. (laughs) All right, let's talk about Jay Z. I think I'm going to run for assemblyman. What? Let's talk about Jay Z. Do you see him anywhere in New York City? I see Beyonce. I don't see Jay Z. I see Beyonce. Beyonce is uh, down here in Dumbo. All right, here's your first quiz of the evening. What does Dumbo stand for? And I said it very slowly and very clearly at the beginning of the conversation. And if you don't get it right, you're going to eat. You have to mail me a couple dip dogs. <laughs> I'll look that one up to Tony, man. <laughs> what does Dumbo stand for? Come on, hurry up. Dumbo, D U M B O? The Disney thing? Or what? Come on. Are you guys talking that? Wacky weed out there, or what? what's going on? Did, didn't we have this conversation already? <laughs> Actually, I don't think you ever went into it. Dumbo, Brooklyn. <laughs> Down under the Manhattan, the Manhattan Bridge, Bridge overpass. overpass. Oh, okay. yeah. yeah. How many times did I have to tell you? What'd you get on your SATs, Mr. Dollar? <laughs> <laughs> Man, I'm 46. I can't remember back that far. 
don't know. Maybe you should keep your day job. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, oh, Mr. Trebek. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. I'm, wait, I'm waiting on those zip dogs. I'll, I'll email you in my uh, address. Okay. Oh. Yeah, we can. Well, I mean, that's not. That's, dip dogs aren't like the uh, the uh, twenty five thirty dollar New York style pizzas. They are very inexpensive. So. Oh um, yeah. I can mail you probably thirty of those things. But. Well, they have to freeze dry them or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Like I said, he's a uh, yeah, totally food out. connoisseur. Yeah, yeah. vacuum pack. <laughs> yeah, that's I a good idea. Wait, you sell in hot dogs, but you put an ice cream cone on there? That's that's weird. I yeah, don't, I don't, I don't understand. They want to sell you ice cream too, but it's not the big <laughs> the big thing. I got a, I got a funny story about New York pizza, and I'm just about I just about had it. I can't take uh-huh. it anymore. But. Uh, <laughs> Uh, my father came down. Uh, he's an old time Italian guy from Rochester, and it was an ongoing joke up there that people in New York like to fold their pizza. All right. You know, yeah. like you eat it like a calzone. So he goes, If I want a calzone, I'll order, I'll, I'll order a calzone. <laughs> he goes, I don't understand this pizza. So what's this? That's not a slice of pizza. That's a calzone. <laughs> so when he came down, I said, Guess what? You're not getting any pizza. So right. he was here for like five. This guy likes to eat, let me tell you. So he said for four days, and I, he started going for the pizza shop. I go, you're not going to have a piece of pizza because you're knocking our pizza. And so he gets in the car, and he's upstate in Yorktown or somewhere like that. It's about an hour away. And he goes, calls me up on the phone. And he goes, guess what? He go, I said, what? He goes, I just had a piece of New York pizza. And I go, you can't. You're not in New York. He goes, hey, the sign says New York style pizza. I just had a piece of pizza. <laughs> <laughs> that's not New York style. Kind of rubbing face from a, from a, from an hour away. From the city. Anyway, the moral of that story is you don't mock New York City pizza. All right? That's all right. <laughs> the I last, agree. The last time I was in New York City, this will tell you how long it's been. Um, we saw John Kennedy Jr. walking on uh, down on uh, in Manhattan. I, you know, I saw him too. That's where we used to be in my business. Used to be down over in that. And I saw her too, the wife. They were right. sitting out on the stoop. That was about 2002 right. or so, right? 2003 right. or even earlier, maybe 99, 98. Right. Yeah. Maybe. Was it? Uh, okay. Car- here's a Carolyn quiz question for you. Or <laughs> All right. Here's a quiz question for you. I have the internet. So. What is the first? What is the first brick oven pizzeria in New York City? Wow. All right. The first. Is it Lombardi's? That's pretty good. Yeah, I think that's close. I don't think it's the first. There's this place called Tatonas or Tatanos or something that's in Coney Island. And the guy's like 100 years old, and the line goes down around the block, and he kind of like does like a seance on you to figure out what kind of person you are, and then he makes the pizza. <laughs> <laughs> and supposedly it's the best pizza going. So I'm, I'm very impressed. I'm very impressed with that answer, Lombardi. <laughs> that gets you that gets you a little bit of street cred back yeah. with me. Right? I get to keep I get to keep my dip dogs now. <laughs> You're back in the fold. You're back in the fold. I'm not talking Calzone, all right? <laughs> oh, I'm not God. talking Calzone. Man, right, you got any more well. questions for me? I got I got a, I got some mouths to feed. I gotta make a living. <laughs> Time is money, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Hey, Alan, it's, it's been great talking to you, man. I've had a ball, so we don't usually get. Uh, yeah, we don't usually have as much fun with the with the podcast guests, but you you've been a blast, man. Yeah, Thank we're gonna you. have oh, to. Yeah. yeah, we're gonna have to see. We're gonna have to meet Alan sometime. Yeah, yeah we, we need to do that. that. Uh, if you ever in, in uh, Nassau and have a blast together, that sounds good. If you're ever in the mountains, you can get uh, the joke. Yeah, <laughs> if you're ever in the mountains of uh, Northeast Tennessee and Southwest Virginia, uh, call us up too. We'll, we'll, All right, we'll show I'll get you. you later. Have a good one. All, All right. right, later, Thanks, man. Thanks, Alan. Take, Take it easy.